Hello, Kayla. Welcome to the Woman Waken podcast. Well, hello, and thank you for having me. Super excited to get into it. Caleb, you and I just did a marathon episode on your podcast a week or two ago. Such a blast. We really could have talked like for hours, I think. Like we were just going for it. It was great. It's a good sign of a good friendship, like brewing. Like, hey, the first couple of times you hang out, you just barely, you're like forcing yourself to get off the call. But you're like, but I could keep hanging. Yes. That's like, that's exciting to me. I'm like, yo. And you're coming to this area to visit. I'm like, I'm hyped. I'm so I know. hyped. I know. And now you're jazzing it up. It's Caleb shared with me for the audience that Caleb, you live out in New York um, yes. and you live in this beautiful region. And I got this call to go out and explore greater New York and Vermont. And you just boop, happen to fall right in there. I tend to show up in people's lives in the most unexpected moments. <laughs> I love it. And it's happening more and more now with people because we're all coming together and we're all building this dream. And I think that's why you and I always have so much to talk about is because we're pretty excited about the same sort of stuff, right? Absolutely. So on that note, Caleb, you are a coach and you're also the host of the Naked Sunday podcast, which again, I had the pleasure of being a guest on. Can you tell us about what kind of a coach are you? What do you focus on in your coaching work? What do you really love to work with people on? So my little tagline is I help people look better naked inside and out. Nice, fun, you know, saucy little tagline of all the things. On the surface, yes, people you know, look better with their clothes off and all that fun stuff. But the deeper thing that I love to help people with is improving that inner sense of identity, that sense of confidence in themselves, really knowing who they are. And I found once you learn how to align that internal and be even aware of what that internal is, it becomes very obvious and easy to align the external. So health, wellness, I tend to serve a lot of entrepreneurs, people that are high performers, people that are even more deeper than that, people that are very heart-centered, that are looking to make a deeper impact in the world. They will, and, and the reason why they typically seek me out is like, I feel like I'm called for more, but I have this block in between where I'm at and where I want to be. And I'm looking to step fully into that authentic self. Yeah. And that's so critical because it's those blocks that do keep us from even starting to act, right? A lot of people have this failure to even try because they think, well, you know, I just don't, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I don't even know where I'm trying to go. And that's when we really do need guidance. You know, that's when a, a life coach or any form of a mentor or guide can be really helpful. When we know deep down that we have a path that we're meant to walk, we have something that we want to bring into the world. We just don't know how to take, because the first few steps is the hardest, right? Yeah. And I think deep down, we know that we know it's going to be like a, I'm going to change my entire life. I think that's something that it is like subconsciously understand the foundation of all this. When you are going to make an identity shift, you have to solve that one problem. Everything in your life has been constructed to serve that previous identity. And we know that to take that next step, it's going to take us on a big journey. So I think what's really scary for most people is they're like, well, who am I going to trust to open this door and shepherd me through that? Mm -hmm. And it, it's not a surprise why, because everybody and their mother sells everything and ever, anyone on all the stuff all the time. And I'm painting broad strokes here. Um, and especially if you've been burned a few times in your life, as my dog wants to like chime in and let everybody know like i'm important too i should be on the call with all my friends um especially if you've been burned a few times and you have had such a deep like resiliency and a lot of your life has been about like grind push fight and you 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 more or less like built your identity and your self-worth off of like i'm a hard worker that's hard to start letting go of that and let somebody in and help you soften that that's not easy that's not easy so Hi. Oh, I heard that Over one. Here, Usually I can't yeah, he hear him, but he, he the mic picked up that one. <laughs> he wants to be known. Everybody's listening or watching little Mr. Snippety Boy over here at my toes. Here, he will get a little wave. Yeah. My most un the most unassuming pup. Most people look at me like when I'm walking through the park and they're like, this dude with that small dog? Yeah. <laughs> 
really like paints a different picture. <laughs> like, oh, I did not anticipate that being the look that was going to go it's on. A here. tiny stuffed animal dog. He seems. It really like does. The best. He's the best. Got him tempered down a little bit right now, but yeah, I think. I think there's a lot. There's so many people out there. Like, there's so many like the game, the the shame and guilt tactics wrapped around like just just do it, man, just do it. Like, mm-hmm. well, when you when you're balancing, especially bigger life changes, like uh, if you have family, you have kids, you have a spouse, to make that next shift in your life, that's a lot of weight. And I think that's also a respect for the life you've built. Like you're, 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 you're not, it's not just about you. You're, you're going to be shepherding other people through a change in your, as you're going through your transformation. So I think it's also a very deeply wound respect thing, why they're afraid. Cause you're like, I get it. Other people's lives depend on me. If you're a business owner, if you're a parent, whatever, you're a caregiver. Yeah. That, that, that bears some reckoning. So I can empathize with anybody who feels the burden of, and that scared, like, oh my God, can I even trust anybody to take me through the first step here? Because mm-hmm. once I open it, am I on shaky ground? Like, what if I mess up? Is this whole thing going to crash and burn? Um, but it's okay. Like, I've come to learn once you put your faith in the bigger things, the right people show up and it's all right. So anyway, yeah. soapbox rant over <laughs> no, I mean that's why you're on the show is to rant that's why we are guests on people's podcasts to get on our soapbox and share our message to the world which it's an important message and what I like about what you're saying Caleb is that you know you describe that when people are going you know full steam ahead with the life that they've known for so long it can feel incomprehensible as how they would adjust it and all they know is in, again in the back of their mind they're like this isn't working I'm exhausted my health is failing I'm not satisfied I am experiencing depression, anxiety, but they don't know how they could ever get off the train that they're on. And it takes having the courage and, you know, making the big choice to say, I have to do this. So I have to pull back and I have to almost stop a little bit and reevaluate, readjust, right? So that it's, you become a clearer channel of what actually works for you, right? You speak to helping people find their core values, being aligned with them in your health, in your relationships, in your work, right? And when we are out of alignment, again, it makes everything dysfunctional. It's not working well, but it can be so hard to do that. And it's it's kind of, you know, I, I got a podcast, a coach for my podcast because I did not know the first steps to take to start to grow it and change it. I just didn't know. And people were like, well, don't spend money on that. I'll give you a few tips but I needed to work with somebody because I didn't know how to implement the changes and how to implement the things in my daily routine and weekly routine that were going to actually get me results. The same is true for what you do is that people might say, yeah, you know, I I really should start doing this, but it stays at that point until you get someone who's like, let me actually show you how you can do it and not just keep it as a a should on the to-do list. I love what you're saying there. And you just highlighted exactly to the point I was making is that once you change one thing, you're going to change everything. Um, the, the deeper part of that is, and what's more heartbreaking to me often is that people don't realize they're actually not that far away. Um, I heard this statistic not that long ago. We'll use weight loss as this piece right here, but the average woman goes on on and off six diets a year. Yeah, it's pretty staggering once you hear that, right? So basically every two months, you're going to be smacked in the face with a new level of failure. And I hear that and I go, huh, it's no wonder why people tie. Get over here, buddy. Chill. Daddy's on the thing. It's no wonder why people are like, I'm throwing my hands up. What? What's the point anymore? And what I think is heartbreaking about this is because they're not realizing it, that if they borrowed the skill set that they've been so masterful at developing and caring for others and doing the same damn thing for themselves, they'd be so much closer, but they just don't know who they are. They're going through a new identity shift. And usually what I find is that they're pushed into it. They're like, well, the kids are leaving. Oh my God, I'm terrified of being alone, of like empty nesting or oh my God, I'm taking on this new identity as a business owner. I'm taking my business to the next level or I'm adding this level to my relationship 
what am I doing here? It's like that big fear of like that big thing I want is going, it's like, I'm so terrified that if I don't handle that, but what I would hope people start doing is I go like, well, if I started building this, skill, if I started building this skill set or utilizing my other skill sets early, classic, like best time to plant a tree was like 10 years ago or whenever, build your skill set now, your transition into those periods of your life, you're going to just continue to borrow other skill sets. It's going to be actually very seamless. Um, and you'll be able to integrate your, your work. The preventive health is not, it's never sexy. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this slow, methodical, steady process. It's not going to be linear. It's going to be evolutions. And it's going to be basically, I'm trusting to go on a relationship with somebody and like, we're going to talk about some stuff and we're going to build small, steady habits. And it's going to feel this way. I think it often takes somebody having been punched in the face enough times to be like, actually, you know what? Somebody who's just, is just going to be reliable at holding space for me. I'm not an idiot. I'm a smart person. I don't need somebody to tell me, do more stuff, do more things, just like hold space. Let me define how my life is going to be. Ty, Ty, speaking of somebody who likes to define how life is going to be, come here, buddy. Um, I think we're in, you used a, I think you used the word permission earlier. Like half my job feels like I'm just giving people permission to just be yourself. And that's, it sounds ridiculous when I say that out loud. Like I feel at least like it sounds ridiculous, but like, has anybody ever asked you like, so what do you want? And why do you want that? Where did this come from? What are your dreams? What are, it's been like, I always think of like my mom, the, my moms that I work with are like, yeah, I'm just like, I got my kids hanging on me all day long. Mommy, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give, do, do, do this, do that. Like, then like go to work and like, this, 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 give me, give me, give me, give me, tell me, tell me, like you're playing mom everywhere else. Like, who are you and all of that stuff? And it's no wonder you start to forget. You're like, I haven't asked, I haven't checked in on what, the, <gasps> what that feels like. Ty, come here, buddy. Here, one more treat. Apologies to all my listeners out there. <gasps> Ty, right here. There's a treat. I hope that there's a, a muffling sound with like Mr. Wolf Boy over here in the background. You can't hear him anymore because he's just being so sassy. It's okay. I thought I had fed him and he was going to be a good boy for this one, but. It's Friday. Be- Your energy is up. His energy is up. They're always affected by where we're at. So he's all hyped <laughs> up too. He just knows once I go on a podcast, it's like, I own you, dad. Treats are coming. It's it's very Pavlovian. And really. It's, you know, like, exactly oh, he needs me to be quiet. I'm going to bark up so I get all the treats. <laughs> all the treats, dad. All the treats, all mine, all the time. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious, Caleb, what do you find the most when, because I, I, I've had a lot of female, you know, nutritional and health coaches. Yet, how do you work with women who approach you and they say, just what you said, I've been on six diets and, and, you know, I think about what you just said, which is where you're giving people permission to actually be able to be themselves and still see the changes they want. Cause I imagine you get people who are like, listen, I wanted to be a keto bodybuilder and I can't do it. It doesn't work for me. But yeah. I would love to find a diet or just a way, a lifestyle where I can like the way I look, but also not feel deprived or like I'm forcing myself into something that I don't want. How do you well, want people to find their own tailored path that's best for them and not just what we're you know, told is the way to do things? Well, the first place I love to ask people is like, what's enough? Like, what do you care about? What's it, like, where do you want to start? But also one of the greatest places to start with rebuilding their, it actually has nothing to do with the knowledge. Most people could tell me five things right now to lose weight. Everybody. In fact, I haven't met anybody who couldn't because guess what? That information is free on the internet. It's more like, how do you like to get there? So say somebody was keto. Awesome. So you like to have these things. Awesome. You know what those, those basic templates are. Do you like measuring and weighing your food? Do you like journaling do you like like what worked and history leaves clues i don't know somebody's story but they know themselves pretty intimately once they give themselves time and space to sit with it they know exactly what to do and hi dude stop here one more treat when you start with like hey what worked in the past They'll give you a list of five things and we'll be like, where do you want to start? Oh, you mean I don't have to do 
85 new things tomorrow, I can just maybe go for a walk or maybe I'm going to start by hydrating or whatever. Choose your one thing. And that starts to be like, well, I enjoyed that last time and it worked. Maybe I just put too much much on my plate and I bought into some like wholesale ideology as opposed to this thing worked here. Oh, well, I learned when I did keto, we'll just use that keto, I ate more protein and I felt really full and really good, but I wanted some more carbs because I happen to like cake. Awesome. Every now and then you want to have some cake. How often do you want to have cake? And hopefully what you're seeing in this is like, it becomes a very casual conversation with your friend. And internally it also becomes, oh, I'm friends with myself on the inside too. Oh, that's nice. I don't hate the person on the inside. Hmm. If I don't hate the person on the inside. I guess I'm not going to be at war all the time. And when you're not at war, the peace you actually make is lasting because you're like, I want to get to know you. I want to explore this. It's like when you're dating and you're going, you're in that honeymoon phase, like, oh my God, I can't wait to go hang out with them. I can't wait till Friday night. We're going to the movies. We're going to ask each other about how life is. We're gonna... And when you actually start dating that authentic person inside of you, when something doesn't work out, you're like, oh, well, you know, like we just learned that that was not a thing for us. Like, oh, that restaurant, not our favorite, but I got to hang out with you for a little while and that was fun. And like next week, like, oh, we went line dancing. I'm using line, I don't know line dancing, but I went line dancing and I didn't fucking like line dancing. Cool, do you like ballroom dancing? Cool, I'll try ballroom dancing instead. Like whatever the thing is, that's what this can evolve into when we start to ask, well, how do you like to move? Well, how do you like to eat? What does your lifestyle feel and look like that you enjoy? And that the classic like eat less, move more. Yeah, that's the basic like math behind this. But how you get there seems like, oh, this was my fit of how I did that. And nobody's there to scream at you, judge you, whatever. It's like, cool, I'm around my crew who likes how I do it. And this can be fun. And then you keep showing up. And like you might not lose 15 pounds a week too. <laughs> or your dog might not be there to bark at you while you're doing your push-ups or your sit-ups, your whatever, even though you might want that. I don't know. Half the time people come over here, it's like, can Ty just be in the room while I'm working out? <laughs> um, right, Ty? Yeah. Um, those things, I think people are so, all their memories of taking care of their body are so, adversarial they're at war inside of themselves no shit it didn't work out of course because eventually you're like i can't willpower myself to do this anymore if that's what my life is going to be all the time like i might as well just enjoy it and so what i'll just put on the 20 pounds because i wasn't happy anyway at least i get to enjoy cake maybe you can have your cake and eat it too like why not so maybe how much cake you're gonna have yeah. second soapbox rant over <laughs> Keep them coming. No, I appreciate all those sentiments so much. And it is, it is true. Uh, sadly, so many of us are at war with ourselves. It's a epidemic. Essentially. We basically learn to live that way because the message we're given is unless you treat yourself that way um, with almost hatred and dictation and force, then you're not going to make anything of yourself. And it's a, you know, very detrimental way to feel because there is this soul inside of you, whether you want to believe it or not, that needs love. And ultimately yeah. love is the most powerful force on the planet. So it's always going to be the more effective driver than hate and anger and force. Well, even with that, I think we get this love thing mixed up, like, especially like you know, we're in this world right now where it's like masculine versus feminine. It's like, no, it's masculine and feminine. You need both. And they're at war with each other. Same problem. And there is the, the masculine energy I've tend to find is like more the accountability. Like there's a little structure. So let's be real. If you're not consistent, i.e. accountability, you're not going to get the result. But how you get there, the softness, I'm not motivated by somebody screaming at me. Cool. You can scream at me all you want, but I'm just going to shut you out. That's not going to work. So knowing that, so what would somebody's driver be? What pulls them? That's the love, the acceptance of like, oh, that's what you're doing this for. That's a different energy. And it's 
it's not bad. It's just different. Some people at a certain stage in their life, they need that aggressive, like, yo, man, I'm on your ass. You got to keep moving. Mm -hmm. But you get to a certain point in your life, you're like, I've lived a life. I don't need you breathing down my neck to beg me to wake up in the morning for how to live my life. And if anything, they need the, I need to learn how to chill out. I need to have soften into this. I need to know how to make this an experience that yeah. doesn't make me clench my fists and want to rip my hair out every single day. That's not, that's not acceptable. So. Yeah. And I think it's exactly what you said is it's about, and that's what a coach can do is find out what are you needing more of and what are you needing less of? Because it is the balance of that feminine and masculine, right? Because you can't have an approach where it's like, just no, it's every, whatever you do is fine. It's all good. I mean, it is, I'm a big believer in unconditional love for yourself. That doesn't go away, but unconditional love is different than just flowy, watery, directionless goals, right? Like, oh, I'd love to get really fit and feel the best in my body, but I don't do anything about it. Okay. Well, you can stay in that, in that space of just self-acceptance, but you it, then you have to have the acceptance of looking however that looks. But if you're like, you know, I just really want to feel like I'm pushing myself to challenge myself a little from a place of love, which is I want to be my healthiest. I want to be able to be more active. I want to live well so that I can see my kids grow up so that I can do the things I want to do in life, explore the world, go hiking, whatever it is. And just as you spoke to, some people need a little bit of that firmer hand, the more masculine where it's like, well, let's put some structure to this. Let's put some things in place. You know, just because someone's coaching you, not all coaches are abusive and angry. No, I imagine you're not, but we, we can become that angry, abusive coach in our head where it's like, you piece of shit, you didn't do this. And you, if you didn't do this, then you're terrible. And, and we just berate ourselves and beat ourselves up. That's not going to work either, but it, it is definitely that balance between some love and then some firm established structure. Well, I think what you just spoke to ironically rarely do I ever have to put like my foot down on anything the people I attract they are already like that voice of I'm not good enough I'm gonna run through a brick wall is already going that that's driver number one to make space the new thing that that makes space for is purpose and that's a different that's not even a push that's a pull I'm like called to go to the next level so it's about knowing where you're at in your stage in your life. If you're need the person like, you know what? Like I need a little fire. Okay. Go find that person. Who's going to be on your behind every time. But if you're that person, your stage in your life, you're like, I need to, I'm taking ownership of this. I don't like the more pressure. Like I've already got enough pressure everywhere from every angle backing off to let somebody see the, the landscape and zooming out is a very different energy. So knowing that, that's important. I think that's important for a lot of people to recognize, know what you need, because those aren't bad strategies. They're just different and they're appropriate for the stage in life. And, and I have a lot of those strategies to thank for where I got to this point because I had the discipline, the structure, but then in making it my own was, was a very different thing. Um, I think what that speaks to is like people who've essentially, what I like to think like you won the American dream, you got food in your belly, you got a house, you got a successful job, you got, you got the stuff, maybe you got the, 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 the marriage or whatever, the two and a half kids and all the things to go with it. And you're like, but I still feel empty inside. Like, what am I, what am I missing on the inside that I'm not fully living? I'm existing, but what does it mean to fully live? And what am I leaving behind? That's that bigger calling that, that kind of person. If anything, like I have to tell them to slow down take a breath. Like I get it. You want to build the, you know, the Mecca of whatever cause you're doing right now, that ain't going to take a day. That's going to be the next 10 years of your existence, 15 years, 20 years, probably the end of your life. Slow down, slow down. Cause you're going to, if you go at this pace, considering your track record, you ran yourself into a brick wall and you destroyed yourself. We need to not repeat that. We actually need to extend your timeline. And I think this will land with any entrepreneurs that are listening right now is that when you shift your mindset to entrepreneurism, especially purpose-driven entrepreneurism, and you look at that as your sport and you actually start to shift it. Like this is an entrepreneurism is a, is a, in this lens is an endurance sport. Whereas the timeline is undefined. It's the game is as long as possible. So I have as many years as possible, especially of quality time 
to put into building my legacy, I think that lens shifts the approach. Like, how do I get there? Well, I need to have enough energy. I need to have enough time. I need to still be supported by enough people that I love. I need to really enjoy who I'm doing this with. It, it, it gets you into this flow state as opposed to slamming on the gas every day. And some people want to live by that, like knock yourself out. But I've found that ain't a way to, you know, it's not a way for me to fully experience. And I also lose my own creativity in the process, which then I really don't feel like myself. I feel like I've like lost my je ne sais quoi along the way. And then like all anybody gets is grumpy Caleb and my wife gets pissed at me. The dog gets extra whiny. And then, you know, and nobody wins in that scenario. Nobody wins at all. So. Yeah, I, I I hope people can zoom out and start looking not just like in their current life, but like look for the depth and the, and the longevity of what this is. But that's hard because now you're actually thinking about your death. Like, oh, cool, I'm going to think about me dying every day. Like, uh, yeah, I get that. I get that's a little terrifying off the rip, but that acceptance brings this freedom to to cultivate a beautiful life. Absolutely, and Caleb, I love that you bring this approach to the workspace to the idea of entrepreneurship. You and I actually did an alignment call together. You offer an alignment call and it is super helpful. And you're kind of asking people like, what's not aligned? Like what's not working for you right now? How can we get you to, to where you feel good about what you're doing, how you're moving towards your goals, right? And I shared with you that I'm sort of in a place in my life where I have sort of built this idea of what I want. And it kind of aligns with this quote that I love that says, build castles in the clouds, that's where they belong, but then start to build the staircase up to them. Because it's like, we're supposed to have big dreams. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great thing. But if all you do is just stare up into space at your dreams that are way up in the clouds and feel untangible, unreachable, how are you going to get there? So you keep that, you know, that North Star, I like to call it, those big dreams, and then you start taking steps. And in our call, you help me kind of get a little revved up about, well, maybe there are a few steps you can start taking. Because just as you said, I tend to have that mentality you spoke to, which is like, well, I would need to do all of this and everything needs to happen now. And I need to have this tomorrow. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What if you just started reaching out to people and find out what they're looking for and what you have that you could give them? And I'm like, uh, oh yeah, okay. I guess, I guess I could do that. So again, it's about getting into alignment, but also finding your values, right? Like uh, the beauty of entrepreneurship is you get to actually do what you really want to do. And you get to actually do what you're really good at. And you can start listening to what people appreciate about you and start focusing on that. I think people are scared to do that though. I think, especially a lot of corporate cultures, you waited for somebody else to define what was important. Mm -hmm. And it's real hard when you say, this is what I care about. Because it also immediately makes everything you don't want stand out and sometimes it's the people you're around. And let me be real clear. It is the people you're around. That's <laughs> actually the answer. And the real one everybody's scared about. Sucks. Oh my God, what if this is the wrong person? That's just the real. Now, before anybody gets really worried here, like that doesn't mean you're going to have a divorce tomorrow or have a breakup. You probably just didn't calibrate what you cared about and didn't even give them a chance to say, that's actually what I want. You might be real surprised. Like I've been waiting for you to tell me what you wanted. So now I know how to support you. But so many people, I feel like have never even flexed their voice of like, this is what I care about. Well, no shit. Nobody has a chance to help you because you didn't tell them what you needed and what you cared about. When you pitch this vision of like, I have this dream. Well, cool. Awesome. Actually, I kind of want the same thing. Cool. Like, let's do that. They they might have been in their own way trying to support you towards that the entire time, but you didn't even give them the tools to help you basically paint your masterpiece. They were just waiting. They're just waiting for you to give yourself permission to go, here, here's the soul. And that's why it's so important to really get clear on like your core values. I believe if you define your identity by your core values, you can pivot to any role that you need to be and be like, I'm still me. Cool. Yes. No problem. But in that voice, you're also going to welcome in the people that also share those same values because you're going to be very careful about what energy you bring in. The scary side of that is they also hold you accountable to that. 
which feels in the beginning like restriction. It feels like what you just left, the box that you put yourself in. But this time it's, I chose to be there. And that is, that's the beauty of this whole journey. You had the choice. You're going to get, this is, you want to own your own business. You want to do anything meaningful in this life. It's not going to be rainbows and butterflies every day. Yeah. The idea is I had the freedom to choose. And I think most people ultimately shy away from it because to take full responsibility means like if it fails, I can't point the finger at anybody else but myself because I said this is what matters. You eventually also find anybody who actually really cares about you. But like, awesome, way to take a shot, get back up. How do we get back on the road? But if you put so much pressure on yourself, I'm like, and my my identity is I'm a winner and you fail at something, eesh, like the thought of failing in any way, shape or form, especially if it's the big thing you say you really care about, the most monumental thing that I could ever want and I failed, uh, that's a daunting task. But starting with learning how to just get little wins with, oh, I knew how to make a choice of, I like walking, or I like dancing, or I like eating chicken, or I like having steak, or I like eating, I don't know, stir fried vegetables, whatever, like little things of nurturing your well being in a way of, this is just what I care about, how I like getting there, is the these, as you talk about building these stair steps, you know, you talk, we talk, you know, I talked about reaching out to people and just like, you have something valuable to give. Hey guys, which of these things that you like that I offer, how, what can I help you with is this first stair step when it comes to nutrition? What's the first stair step? How do we organize your time in a way that's meaningful? That's the first stair step. The next person, the next part of the solution will present itself and you'll be fine. Then you'll be fine. So. You will be fine, but there will be initial discomfort. And I think that's also why people don't actually make changes is because you have to be uncomfortable, right? I mean, it's like the old saying, like your life begins outside of your comfort zone. If you stay in your low comfort zone, you're never going to see your true capability and what you could actually create and have and do until you push through. Because just as you said, you know, for so long, when, as we go through life, we just keep doing what people tell us to do. You have to go to school. You got to go to college. You got to get a job out of college, a corporate job where they tell you what to think and do and focus on. And the second that you start to think for yourself, you're going to get resistance. I remember when I decided that I wanted to go back to school and get my master's in psychology to be a therapist. I was, I had a sales job at the time and I told my manager and I was like, I'm going to back to back to school. He's like, Oh, for, for business management. And I was like, no, for psychology. And he's like, Oh, he could care less about psychology. He's a business dude. And that's where you have to, that's when it really comes through about connecting with your core and on and knowing and honoring yourself, because you're going to have people who say, why are you doing that? That sounds risky. That sounds silly. What are you even talking about? I know. I mean, talk about that, like starting women waking people were like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. it, uh, are you like some, you know, hippie nut now? And I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you call me. You can say whatever you want. I was drawn to this. I believe in this work, but I still feel uncomfortable at times, you know? And, and you also, you know, we talked about having people around you who want the best for you, whatever that means. And you will find the people who are not maybe for you anymore, because they're the ones who will say, I don't know about this thing you're doing. It just, I don't, and it, it doesn't mean that they're not good people. It just means, well, maybe that's because when push comes to shove, when we're going to build that staircase, we're going to lose some people in our lives. And we're going to want to keep the people around us who truly believe in our vision and support us in our vision. I love what you're just bringing out there. And I think bringing back to some, a great point you made in the, earlier on of like, why do you get a coach? Well, your coach is essentially your first believer. Yeah. And they, they tend to be a couple steps ahead. So let's think about the, you're the, let's use the classic, you're the average of the five people you've spent your time with, or essentially what voices you let into your head. First, you get your coach. Okay, cool. That that fourth person, or pardon, the fifth person just dropped off. So your fourth person now became the bottom. Awesome. You just leveled up your average. Guess who's probably going to come along pretty quickly? Your coach is probably going to bring somebody else into your life. Two, okay, move down. The person who was your top person in your life, all of a sudden is your average. You just naturally moved up. But it's because you got that first believer basically saying like, cool, you got this idea. I've did the thing you did. 
cool, I got you. We're good. You'll be fine. I get it. All those other naysayers, but you need that. I think we've, I think we so underestimate the power of belief. Your coach or your whomever who just goes, you got this. Okay. Hey, I'm going to love you. You're going to be back here next week or whenever the hell you meet again. You got it. I'll, I will be here. Okay. Win, lose, fail, all that. You got somebody there. You have another shot. You get another at bat. And you start to learn how to stack that belief because they're like, oh, taking a shot didn't mean the end of the world. Granted, if you try to jump off a cliff as your first shot, like that's, you're probably not going to work. But like the idea of like, hey, this week, how do you feel confident? Do you feel confident you could have like three glasses of water every day? Okay, like you got this. I mean, you come back with like, I had two glasses of water every day. I already feel better. All right, how do you think about doing three glasses of water again <laughs> next week? That's that's the power of this belief that we're talking about and flexing your voice, bringing in new new energy to help. I'm not going to say drown. I don't guess I will use the word drown out, but to drown out the bottom negative energy, which is really just occupying space in your mind that you don't even realize it's this real estate that is like it's waiting to be freed up it's waiting to be freed up to be like we're going forward i'm gonna get over the couple hurdles that i already knew was coming anyway we're gonna be fine we're gonna be fine and you just got to find the right person like of what kind of energy like you're buying a relationship at the end of the day that's all it is you're gonna buy the best cheerleader of your life like so take your time sorting out how do they talk to you how do they make you feel? Do you feel like you could have a conversation? Like my gold, I, I'm in my living room right now. People sit down on the couch with me. If they wouldn't come sit down on the couch and I wouldn't have like a hang with them, they're not going to be the right fit. They don't like my dog. They're probably not gonna be the right fit. Like, cool. But if you vibe with that, hey, we might be friends. This could be cool. Like we'd hang out anyway. I'm going to love you anyway. Cool. You didn't lose 50 pounds in four weeks. Cool. Still love you. Still gonna keep you accountable. You can keep showing up. We're gonna get you there eventually. But that's the I think that's the importance of what we're talking about here. Getting clear on what you want also gets you clear on who you want to do it with. And once you do that, it's literally just a matter of time and effort. That's it. It's going to happen. It's gonna you almost like you're falling forward no matter what. Yes. Well, things pick up momentum, things catch on that they you know, once you've sort of put that out there and you put the things in place, you're in the flow. Because when you're brave enough to say, this is what I'm doing and I'm holding my vision for this, no matter what. And for those people that no longer want to support me or then I wish them the best, but I'm moving forward with the people who do see my vision and do support me. And then what happens is you start getting people who appreciate you and they say, wow, I like what you're doing. I like what you said. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for welcoming into your, me into your home and making me feel like I'm really heard in this coaching journey. And then you start to realize, wow, I was right. There are people out there who are going to want what I have to offer. And it's that part that's the hardest hump to get over where you're like, am I doing this for nothing? Am I crazy to think that this is possible, that I could do this? But then you do it. And man, does it ever pick up momentum after that? Because it's it, all the effort that we put into in the beginning. We don't see results. We don't see results. And then suddenly it's you know almost just, uh, energetic, an energetic force that once it gets over a certain point, it's just on its way. I mean, we've all seen people who blow up, right. Who all of a sudden have success and prosperity. And it's because it's, we call, sometimes we call it an overnight success, but it's usually like a 12 year, five year long oh, effort that then looked like an overnight success. But my point is that just, as you said, the biggest thing is first to have people in our corner who support us and believe in us. Because then we'll find the people who appreciate us. And that's going to be all the fuel that we ever need to keep going for that, for the long distance. Because again, as you spoke to, the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship is it's your life. It's no longer your work. You're doing this because it's all you want to do with your life. And you've melded the two. And it's a beautiful thing, but it's not easy. That's why a lot of people don't do it. Yeah. And people talk about wanting freedom. They they want the, most people want the idea of freedom. I can do whatever I want. Well, to be able to do whatever you want comes with a heavy dose of responsibility. Like that's the, that's the scary part. And I think of entrepreneurism as really the most highly spiritual endeavor you can ever go on because it is clarifying. This is who I am. This is what I care about. This is this is what I want to do with my life. And it and it welcomes people. And you have the most powerful feedback mechanism of. Am I doing a good job? 
Yes, people pay me money. Am I doing a bad job? No, I'm not making money. Cool, time to pivot. And maybe it's in my messaging. Maybe I'm not being as real. Maybe I'm being too restrictive, too whatever. Like and all and and it it asks of you to look in the mirror constantly because you take ownership and responsibility for the fact like I made these choices. And that's the most empowering thing you can do is to decide I will choose. I do also happen to believe in fate, but I do believe that like fate is a, I see fate as like, this is a checkpoint that you're going to have to go through anyway. And it's going to continue to present itself as many times as possible, as it must be until you accept the bur- like the choice of like, mm-hmm. yes, I'm going to take it on. And I'm going to learn the lesson of whatever fate is trying to teach me right now. With that being said, what I've learned, the longer you put off dealing with fate, <laughs> the more painful it's going to be later on. It's like that. It- it's like you don't pay your credit card awesome you think it's going to be the same rate next month hell no anybody's ever been in credit card debt it stacks up real fast and it's going to sting so you know with that in mind any logical person be like cool i'll just pay down my debt sooner like here's the presentation of it i don't know how i went through those three different thoughts by the way if you could, i told you i'm on one today i am having like, a great day you're it's like bring it out yeah i'm following yeah So on that note, I want to also, I want to jump tracks a little to more of like expanding on this idea. So yes, entrepreneurship is beautiful and offers freedom, but it's not for everyone. I will say that. However, there is personal freedom, which is also what you're helping people with. And I want to ask you to kind of get into your personal story a bit, Caleb, because I think this offers some insight into that because some people love being an employee. I have friends who are like, my nine to five offers me freedom because I don't have to worry and stress about how I'm going to pay my bills, how I'm, what I'm going to do. It finances the life that I truly care about. I don't want my work to be my life. I want to have work, be work. And then I get to do the things I want to do that are meaningful to me. Beautiful. There's different people with different interests. However, that same person probably would likely be able to think for themselves and be able to embrace the things that they feel is true in their heart, but maybe they were shut down early in life. And that can be the result of our childhood and the way we were raised, maybe some of the ideas we were taught. Caleb, you've shared with me that you grew up in essentially a cult. And I mean, talk about something that can frame your view of the world or try to. Tell us about that experience and how that, I mean, it sounds like that probably motivated you to do the work you do now, which is, hey, you are free to think for yourself and have the life that you want based on what you really believe in. So yes, I grew up in a what I call a cult. Some people call it a cult. Some people call it religion. Realistically, nowadays, I just call it a lesson um, because that's all it is. It was something that taught me something about my life, and it taught me probably the most powerful and beautiful lesson I could ever be given. Of It gave me an opportunity to go explore who Caleb Nelson is. So I grew up in something most commonly known people call it the Moonies or the Unification Church. Anybody who wants to look down that, it think of like from a practical sense a lot of like your most rigid kind of uh catholicism kind of thoughts um but some of the the side things some of the big things that affected me was there was uh, arranged marriages so my parents actually in the guinness book of world record largest mass wedding they were married married in madison square garden you didn't know this i didn't talk about this with you okay so there no, you go. what are you there. what your parents are yeah. famous in the guinness book of world records not them specifically, but the, I don't know, a few thousand people that got married all at once. Oh, okay. So um, it, was, it was not the biggest, it was the most couples getting married. It wasn't like just your parents and they just had a gigantic wedding. It was several people. Correct. Okay. More than several. It was a lot of people. <laughs> Hence why they needed Madison Square Garden. Um, wow. But like arranged marriage is like, you, you, like go talk. Like you're going to get married. And it was understood that it was going to happen. Um. There was also no such thing as like premarital dating, nothing like that, no boyfriend, girlfriend, any of that stuff. Functionally, how did this affect me? So when I look back, what it actually was really telling me is that the highest form of what I believe to be love, and well, aside from like the legal standpoint of marriage, I believe the the idea of like accepting your partner, like the, your kind of your soul's recognition and another that whole concept was on somebody else's terms and i wasn't even part of the conversation of like hey ask me what i want 
let me be part of choose, I'm going to spend my life with this person. I'm going to, not only that, I'm going to build a life with this person. Ty, come here, buddy. I'm going to build a life with this person, have a family, have this, like, I should have a thought process in this. And I look back and I go, well, they got to remember, even when I kind of had my separation with my parents for a while, was you went on a journey and you went on a bigger journey well before you made a commitment to this philosophy. And mind you, like my father doesn't believe in it. My mom does. And they're still happily married. And it's a whole bit, but like they're different choices. What it happened to be when I look back, it was a set of practices and routines and structures no different than pretty much every religion you'll ever run into. There was things like fasts and praying and things you commit to, to open you up. And it was rigid. It was dogmatic. This is the way. And there's a strong figurehead that like any other kind of religious dogma, is, it's kind of what it is. And the ironic part is the more I talk about this, most people go like, oh, I kind of grew up in some way that. And when I pull back rigid dogmas, philosophical ideology ideological wars you see it in we'll just use health for right now think about the keto hi come here buddy you think about keto you think about vegans you think about paleo you think about whatever name your dogmatic thing that is out there right now this is the rigid this is the best diet says who you know for what goal and what are they looking to like because some person who would help them solve one thing, then wholesale pitches the rest of the thing. And each one of them work for something. And you know, when I talk about the look better naked right. thing, it's basically I want to lose some weight. Cool. What do they typically get people to do? Eat less calories. Awesome. Got them to then lead to, I'm going to move some more. Cool. Awesome. Tyson, come here, buddy. It basically got people consistent and focused on a thing, on a goal. So for me, when I look back, the value was, okay, I understand routine and structure, but the thing that was missing was how do you entice curiosity into this? There was, I did not grow up with space for me to really flex my opinion. I didn't have a voice. I remember like, all, I didn't feel like I could talk about anything other than like, but like sports, cause I was a good athlete. And schoolwork, because I was like, I have to be a good student. Like, I have to be the best. I have to be structured. And I'm the firstborn son, and I'm supposed to blah, 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 blah. And that was suffocating to be all of those things. And with all great stories, there was a girl. And I was like, I want to date this girl. <laughs> huh, this doesn't line up. So finally, <laughs> so this, is, this is kind of this, like, I, I haven't rocked the boat on anything else, but this doesn't fit the full narrative. I can do the quote unquote professional stuff. We'll talk, call it school. I can do the health stuff with the sports, but like this thing here, it doesn't line up with me. And it's the love piece. It's the relational piece. It's the connection piece. And at 17 years old, I made a very profound commitment to like, this is not the path I'm going and had a nice fallout with my family. And I, I love what you said earlier about like, some people love their nine to five job. It's not about the job. It's more about, the ownership of the choices I make. Most people just settle into it because like, this is, I guess, what I'm going to do with my lot in life as opposed to, no, this is really what I want. I don't want to own this position. I want to do it to the best of my abilities. That's a different energy. So that provided me a very powerful and essentially a spiritual like opening. And mind you, I rejected all sense of spirituality for a long time, shockingly, because it was all spiritually related. Um, to go on a journey of like, who is Caleb Nelson? What do I care about? And, you know, reject all the structures and just be free and like, don't put any pressures on me. And that had its own fair share of problems. But if there's anything I can have peace with, you... come here, Ty. I'm so sorry about him today. If there's anything I can really entice people about my journey through that, it's probably an ironic thing, is not only forgiving what happened, because realistically, like first world problems, like I have food in my belly, roof over my head, people that actually love me. Like they just wanted, they wanted me to win in life. Is that people get very caught up in this, this, the world of empowerment, the world of all this stuff. But you really, ultimately, people are like fueled from like a victim, like 
I hate them and suck. They, they suck at this and then blah, blah, blah. Not realizing like that ironically was your path to being so aware and makes you good at what you're doing. So for me, I've come to a place in like, when I said it was my lesson, like, I'm, in I'm incredibly grateful for that was my path because it also allows me to see ultimately this lack of self-awareness in others and this lack of self-love that so many people are allowing themselves to be fueled by this inner self-hatred, this guilt shame complex to be like, what if I just allow them to believe in themselves? Yes. I might provide a little structure. Yes. I got some tools to put things in place, but you're the, you're the owner of your life. How about I help you learn how to make small decisions for yourself where you, and don't do what the Caleb Nelson problem was because I went and did every crash diet. I've learned how to destroy plenty of relationships. I've learned how to destroy my businesses a couple of times over. I've learned how to destroy my body in more ways than I know how to describe. Don't do what I did. Maybe do these baby steps on all fronts and you can you can enjoy a transformational journey that can be, yes, uncomfortable at times, but far more pleasant and far more curious and far more forgiving and far more loving and far more abundant than I think people ever can imagine. And I guess to put a bow on this is like your past is not always this cage that you think it is. It might actually be the the, the vehicle that sets you free if you allow it to be. And um that was a very real time reflection right there, by the way. So that one just went, that was a stream of consciousness. I, I don't think I've ever said it that succinctly about my gratitude for what I've learned in my life. You better but, write um, it down. That's a good one. Well, we'll we have good. it recorded. You can, you can know. that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But right. thank you for letting me share that one. That one, I've, I haven't thought about that in a little bit. So yeah, that was, uh, it's so funny. The more I've talked about it, people come out of the woodwork. Oh, I kind of grew up in a cult. Some of them are like actual cults that most people like you know, whatever they want to call it. A lot of times it's like very rigid kind of Christian or that kind of thing. So um, it goes to show like throughout the world, we've, we've been built on a lot of that. And perhaps we're going into this place in life where we have so much at our fingertips. We don't even know what to do with all the abundance around us. All we're used to doing is destroying abundance. So we're, we're at a, a very odd place in time to to shift the narrative we have within ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Caleb, so thank you so much for sharing that that deep insight. And it, it's it can never be expressed enough someone's truth and someone's true experience because what you just spoke to is going to land with a lot of people who needed to hear it and who needed to hear that sometimes the thing that we thought was the worst thing that could have happened to us or something that ruined us or destroyed us was ultimately the thing that set us free. Because without that, going to that depths of that grit and that challenge, we wouldn't have been able to find that place in ourselves where we were ready to fight for our lives, for our personal freedom, for our personal experience, truly expressed. And it takes what it takes, you know? And it kind of makes us pretty interesting people when we've gone through these type of things. Yeah, at least got a good story to tell. It <laughs> inspires people. It's something fun. Yeah. And I would even go one step further. Instead of like fighting for it, it's something to live for. Because we're just so used to fighting. It's like, great, you got great at fighting in your own tie. Come here, bud. We all got great at fighting in our own way. Maybe it was like, you know, shutting people off passively, aggressively, or like some people fought physically. But yeah. man, maybe if we just started using this actual concept of love, we might realize we're not that different from each other. And shit, we might get along a lot better. We way more pleasant. <laughs> yeah. It's coming. The days are coming. It's just the passing of a phase right now. We go through phases. And I, I don't know if you meant to say this so profoundly, but I really appreciate what you said that we've learned to destroy abundance. And to me, that's exactly how we live. We've, what are we, we push and we push and we work and we try to achieve for what? To usually to destroy it. it. We don't even know why we want it. We just know we want it. It's kind of like, you know, you said that you, you went through cycles of destroying your body and jobs and such. Same here. I can't tell you how many times I got myself to the exact weight I wanted and just completely self-destructed. And it's because you, you don't know how to actually be with what you want. Cause that's not what, you know, all you know is to push and to achieve and to yearn for something. And when you're actually in it, you're like, fuck this, this is on this. I can't sit within this. 
I don't see the value in myself because so often I believe that I actually deserve what I thought I wanted so badly. And then when we actually get it, when we take our time to be aligned, that our actions meet our values, then we just kind of float into it. We swing into it and suddenly we realize, damn, this is pretty cool what I'm doing. This is pretty cool who I am. This is pretty amazing who I've met and I'm not ruining it. And I'm not destructing because I allowed it to organically evolve and grow rather than that mentality of let's just get all the stuff and get all the abundance so we can blow it into smithereens. Well, there's a couple beautiful layers that I think you, you started to bring out there. What I've noticed when transformation is truly done well, and for the record, I've observed a real transformation is about three years long because the first year is I am not. The second year is I'm trying to figure out who I really am. And then the third year is I know what I am. I'm going to put it and each season brings its own new things. Like think about holidays, think about deaths and families, think about like stuff that comes up in every season. But within all of that, it, when you give it a longer timeline, that, like that is like, well, one, I can manage that. Two, you show up and you're like, I don't feel like anything happened. I just like lived my life. The, the changes are so minute that it barely registered. And what I've found, I love how you said it there. It's just like, I have just this, this abundance is here. Ironically, sometimes the best things when you're like, oh, I've arrived is something bad doesn't happen. When you were expecting that other shoe to drop and you're like, oh no, it's actually good. Just like, for me, it's usually like my wife and I didn't get in a fight over the same stupid thing. Like, oh, she just like, we're good. Oh, okay. Awesome. This is like, that was, we, I, I guess we're going on with our day now. A little silly. Th it seems so silly. But that's the abundance I think we're talking about. And I mean, all I can really say to this, I hope everybody at some point in their life gets to experience that because it's 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 worth so much more than like the standing on the podium thing and having, you know, it just hits different. It's different. And I feel like it's like this full body high and you feel like your entire internal energy expands, like your aura kind of goes like 10 feet wider and like all right, let's go. I'm uplifted. Let's, let's, you know, do some of the other awesome things here. Um, yet still internally, very still it's like <laughs> weird confluence of things. So yeah. yeah, you got me so fired up right now. I can't even begin to describe, I, <laughs> even like with my dog going in the background right now, you've got me yeah. just like on a tear right now with these, these inspiring ideas. Well, good. That's what we need, Caleb. We need ideas and sentiments and expressions like yours. And I mean, talk about being, you know, in that, in those later stages, I mean, you're, you're doing beautiful work. You're putting amazing offerings out into the world and you're part of this change. You know, you're part of this shift that we are truly experiencing because we're deciding just as you said, year one, I don't think this is me. And then year two is what, what am I going to do about it? And three is like, this is me. You know, and I love that you said that because I was just thinking I'm turning 38 next week. And I was thinking, you know, 36 was really rough. And then 37 was a lot of like exploration and work. And it's, and it's sort of like year one, year two, and I'm moving into year three, baby. So I'll meet you there. <laughs> Gasoline on the fire, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. And the more that this, en this energy is contagious. And what I always say is that when people start looking around and saying, I like what they're doing. What, what is going on for them? They, they're a little, you know, they're maybe a little different than the usual, but it seems like a, a more pleasant way to live. It seems like a more enjoyable way. Can I live that way? And that's what I appreciate about coaches like you is you're not saying, follow me and let me tell you what to do. You're saying, let's find your best expression. Let's let you align so you can come through. So we can stop looking at everybody else and being like, I need to be like them and saying, what about what I can be? What's my true potential? What's my true abilities and gifts that I can bring forth? Because that's when life gets really good is when all of us are honoring ourselves and seeing the glory, the brilliance in each of us. Because then we're all just fucking partying together and having a good time. <laughs> all hyped up and energized. <laughs> I love that energy. And, you know, to that effect, I think most people, I think that's why people get so worried about the next thing that's being sold on the internet or whatever it is nowadays. And don't get me wrong. It should be known 
at a certain point in my career, I acted a hell of a lot like a cult leader because I was operating from the scarcity of trying to still be in the box and not honest with myself. It was like, I can, j it was only look better naked. It wasn't the inside and out part because I was still uncomfortable allowing for that space. And I think you start to realize like that is, that's a, that's a, I'm a fear-based scarcity-based human I'm not even allowing real love into my life. So be mindful of that. When you're hearing people like, yo, I'm good on me. What do you want? I think that's a great, like, I think for anybody that's listening, if they're looking for a coach in any place in their life, because I'm not for everybody. If somebody asks like, hey, what do you want? And it's like, cool, I might not be the right fit. That's a great place to start because their way is a way but it's not the way. And that's a great indicator for somebody to start feeling more comfortable about their first step. This That's my basically my little way of saying like, hey, maybe you just sharpen that BS detector right there. At least you can dismiss those and you can go start asking a new question before you waste hours of your life, if not, you know, tens of thousands of dollars doing the next, you know, whatever thing. But um, yeah, it, when you start to find that community where it allows you to express yourself in that way, you're like, I, I didn't realize, sometimes you're like, I didn't even realize I was carrying all this shit. Huh. I can just be myself. Huh. What else can we do together? I don't know. Let's go see. It's so much more playful. Absolutely. Right, and play is fun. Joy is fun. Celebrating ourselves is really fun. So Caleb, thank you so much for being on here. Thank you everything for everything that you've shared. Thank you for the work that you do. If people listening would like to work with you, they'd like to find out more about you. How can they find you? If you go to nakedsundaystudios.com, that's basically a landing page that if you want to do the alignment audit, that's my little way of like, here, let's go on a first date. I'm going to help you for a couple of things. I don't know if I'm going to be the right fit for you, but at least I can point you in the right direction. Um, you can hang there. If you're not ready for that yet, go listen to Naked Sunday podcast, wherever, what am I on? Spotify and Apple podcasts. I think I'm on YouTube too. Yeah, those are the spots. And, um, or just follow me on Instagram or the social media, look for naked Sunday studios. There's just a lot of neon pink and neon blue. That's that. Just look for that. You're probably and a lot of your spot. dog. There'll be a lot of your dog. And, if they follow on Instagram, there will be a lot of my dog. He gets more attention than anything. I could put like this profound thing out crickets and homeboy snoring. Like, huh? It's insane. Him, him barking on a podcast right now yeah. would be like the, the cat's pajamas. So yeah, the yeah. internet loves furry creatures. Yes, they do. Well, Caleb, all that will be in the show notes. I appreciate you so much. I am. We're going to be collaborating again in the future because I'm going to come out there, meet you. We're going to work together. It's going to be great. So for our first podcast, this is fantastic. On my show, I got to be on yours. That was great. To many more, cheers to freedom, excitement, joy. Hope You're you have awesome. a good weekend. Thank you. <laughs> Take care.